Before I introduce our first speaker today, let me just uh, bring up one point I forgot to mention, and that's the Wi-Fi password. You all are eager to know the Wi-Fi password here. So uh, the network is VSCI, and the password is 10 times capital A. So it's A, 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 10 times big letters, okay? So that's the, that's the password, and now let me bring the first speaker of today, who is uh, Josef Shima. Josef. Okay. Josef is a professor of economics and free market scholar living in Prague, Czech Republic, but mostly and primarily he has served as the president of this wonderful private university since 2009. Uh, he also served uh, for years as an editor director of Liberalny Institute pra in Prague, the oldest free market think tank in the Czech Republic that translated over uh, 10 books, including Human Action from Ludwig von Mises. He's a founder and editor-in-chief of inter the interdisciplinary scholarly journal New Perspectives on Political Economy, and the president of a major interdisciplinary gathering of Austrian and free market scholars in Central Europe that's called Prague Conference on Political Economy, both of which are becoming the flagships of Severo Institute. Josef has published dozens of articles in professional and popular journals and a number of his own books in Czech, including Market in Time and Space, An Introduction to the Logic of Social Action, Law and Economics Primer. Well, so without any further ado, let me bring up here on the stage Josef Shima. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a wonderful day today. Um, so many young souls eager to learn on Saturday about liberty, and not only learn, but also do something about it. And um, in my today's talk, I will a little bit try to remind you that actually some 25 years ago, uh, we all lived through a sort of similar uh, situation when suddenly there was room for spreading of liberty. And now we can take a look back and see how much we succeeded. But first of all, let me introduce uh, to you this school. Uh, this is a small private university which started as a school offering BA and MA degrees uh, in political science and uh, public administration. Later on, we open up programs uh, in law and business and economic policy. So we sort of covered social sciences um, and uh, educate people in cross-disciplinary uh, areas in a small setting. Uh, our standard size of a classroom is something like 15, 20, maybe 25 students, so you actually get to know your students and your professors uh, very well. And what is especially interesting is that this school does not discriminate uh, against uh, free market scholars, such as Hayek or Mises or Milton Friedman. Uh, we also teach our students about free market approaches to environmental protection, uh, or non posnerian approaches to law and economics, which I'm sure Tom Palmer, for example, uh, would like. Um, however, this school wants to be more than just a place where you can cultivate your understanding of free market ideas. We want to be a platform for all those who are willing to contribute to our understanding of a free society and have entrepreneurial ideas or projects about how to promote peace, social harmony, private property-based social order, trade. Uh, and they also want to know and want to learn how to limit destructive powers of state and their continually growing bureaucracies. That is why we do things which go beyond classroom education. We often host famous foreign free market stars, such as recently Mike Munger of Duke University or Richard Epstein of Chicago University and NYU. 
we substantially contributed to the fact that oldest Czech free market think tanks operate under uh, one roof, so to speak, Liberani Institute, Civic Institute, and indeed the original several uh, liberal conservative academy. So in a way we want to build Liberty Fortress Jungmanova Street, which will be always a place open for free marketeers to come over to both study and contribute to development of free market ideas. We offer uh, free market summer schools in cooperation with Ohio University and famous free marketeer Richard Vedder or Foundation for Economic Education and hope to be able to do more in the future. Hosting this event, working together with Students for Liberty and helping Czech Students for Liberty launching their operation is only next logical step in several institutes' activities. A very pleasant step indeed. Next month, uh, we are going to celebrate 25 years of what is called the Velvet Revolution. Uh, and as I already indicated, back then I was 25 years younger, which means that I was pretty much your age, fresh university student, uh, studying at the University of Economics, which actually was a very funny experience, because uh, back then, professors, and that school was not an exception, they actually didn't know what to teach because the only thing they have ever known was Marxian e economics and they actually were sort of surprised and unprepared for the change. Um, so I vividly remember professors who had to read lectures which they did not prepare themselves, they pretty much were sort of a chapter ahead of students, and when you ask questions, they would never give you an answer because they, they didn't know better. Uh, and by the way, many of these former Marxists are still teaching. Um, modern communication technology was not in existence, so indeed no emails, no World Wide Web, uh, no books online, no archives of articles. Uh, I, when I at that time wrote an article about the great uh, Gustave de Molinari, I needed to get you know, one, a, a paper published somewhere, and I, I remember that I had to ask a friend to call a friend, and then they had to fax me the article from Australia, because that was the only way how you could get to, to, the, to the paper you needed. You know, what, what a change it is today, and what a, what a hope new technology gave us uh, today. So, a lack of non-Marxist literature, a lack of actually any book on economics, which was relevant for me, um, had its advantages though. Uh, we were lucky that we were beginning, that, that at the beginning of 1990s, we students at that time could easily find pro-market books. The quantity of books wasn't that great and hence we almost had to had no other chance than to read new translations of books by free marketeers, such as Paul Hain and his Economic Way of Thinking, which is, by the way, a great, a great book. Uh, and Pete Betke of GMU took over the publication, and so the book is still available. Or Milton Friedman, his books Free to Choose or Capitalism and Freedom. And not only that, not only that the books were available, but many of these scholars came to Prague and lectured for students, general public, or high school teachers. And they lectured not only about markets and how markets work, but also about humility of classical liberals and freedom lovers. And it was a revelation for me to discover the beauty of broad approach to social sciences, 
which uh, typically free market scholars have. Uh, you know, we could, for the first time, legally read uh, Hayek's Road to Serfdom or Law, Legislation, and Liberty. Mises's books got translated. Uh, and when later on Human Action got translated, uh, maybe some of you participated in this event. It was like over 200 people uh, participating, uh, attending the book launch, and Ron Paul came and gave a wonderful talk. So, so these were publications of books by free marketeers were sort of big social events, and hence visible, and hence a lot of people learned about those things through activities of that kind. Um, for the first time, many of us young economists started to think not only about benefits of being free to trade, but also about application of free market ideas to political sphere, thanks to James Buchanan who uh, came to Prague and lectured, or law with the help of books, uh, for example, by Bruno Leone, which is now for sale right there, or Frederick Bastiat, or in other spheres. We could experience firsthand a huge variety of approaches to the principles of liberty, not only different accents in different disciplines, political philosophy, economics, legal theory, political theory, but also different attempts and methods to develop and apply the message of liberty or to get the message across. So we could see, and it was very important and instructive, disputes and conflicts among different free marketeers. You know, uh, we could see differences between Vienna and Chicago approach. When, for example, Friedman was in Prague, and we asked him about Hayek's book on money, prices and production, Friedman said, this is a bad book, don't even bother to read it. Which, you know, is sort of interesting. You have, you know, you sort of like the great Hayek, you like the great Friedman, and then they sort of do not really appreciate the work of the other in some spheres, not generally. So this sort of realization that there are disputes among free marketeers is something which was important. Or, you know, the dispute between ordo liberals German ordo liberals and, and the Austrian school. So when a book by um, Eucken got published, uh, you know, we could see debates between like Austrians, Mises, and Eucken and ordo liberals arguing you know, how far you can go with this free market approach. What should be sort of set aside for the state to be done? And they couldn't find a, an agreement. Or a dispute between like pure theorizing on the one hand and let's say experimental economics on the other hand. We had Vernon Smith here, Nobel Prize winning economist, and Vernon said, well, I, you know, I really like Hayek, uh, but I think you do not really get the message across by you know, writing wonderfully about uh, you know, knowledge which prices uh, communicate. We, you have to do it differently, and hence, you know, the origin of experimental economics. Some people really hate it because they believe this doesn't really, you know, help to get the liberty message across. Some say, well, this is wonderful. We have now two tools to, to talk to people, and some people will be more receptive to one tool and other people to, to the second one. Um, or a nice dispute between arguing using first principles only, like you know, private property is the cornerstone, uh, cornerstone of, of social order, and that's the, that's the argument, or when Bjorn Lomborg was here and presented his uh, skeptical environmentalist, he says, well, you know, perhaps, but who cares? Well, what about cost-benefit analysis? Let's see how stupid many governmental regulations are uh, measured by cost-benefit analysis. You do not really need first principle argument. Uh, this cost-benefit is much more powerful. Uh, we had Michael Novak, Catholic thinker, coming here telling us, well, faith and freedom are not enemies, and uh, pointing out that 
it is crucial to develop uh, what he called economics as humanism, which by which he meant well Hayekian Austrian economics. That's the economics which people who who are linked to Catholic thinking they will really appreciate. By the way, relatively recently, uh, Czech Archbishop. Duca highly praised Thomas Wood's great book, How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization, a book which is heavily influenced by the work of Mary Rothbard. Um, and a reviewer later said that it is the most valuable contribution so far to the Catholic literature in the Czech language. So suddenly you start realizing that, well, you actually have something to offer to people, people of faith. Um, all these activities had a real impact on the nature of public debate, and it's important to realize that, these, th that there is a lot of newly emerging institutes and institutions collaborating uh, not only domestically, but cross political borders as well. There are indeed Students for Liberty, but there are Hayek Institutes and Mises Institutes and Institutes and Research Centers called after Leoni and Molinari and Rothbard and Juan de Mariana, etc., etc. And I'm very happy to see that uh, you, Students for Liberty, draw inspiration from all those groups. You seem to appreciate the work of authors from a big spectrum of approaches. You want to understand and know more about key concepts of liberty. You see differences of exposition of liberty principles not as, not as a problem and a reason for fighting the infidels, but as a challenge for you to understand better what liberty really amounts to. The key point uh, I want to make is to encourage your curiosity. Read old masters for sure, but try to apply the knowledge onto new problems. Indeed, we have to understand the role of private property, entrepreneurship, and prices to know why it would be stupid to let governments produce cars. After all, despite the socialist propaganda in the 80s, no one was able to hide a difference between East and West German cars. You didn't need to study too much to distinguish Trabi from Mercedes or Volkswagen. It was clear, market-based system works, center planning is a costly and dangerous mistake. What is true for production of cars is also true for production of chairs and computers and clothes and shoes. It's pretty easy to present a relatively simple argument for free markets in the production of these things. But what about more complicated stuff? Roads, water distribution, electricity, elementary schools. Here it becomes more complicated and we, defenders of liberty principle, we have to provide a more sophisticated narrative. We have to know well history and show that and how private production had worked or works, how it worked in the past and how states typically took over that is nationalized and how we could possibly get production of these things into private hands again. And what about other things? Money, law, security services. Can competition and entrepreneurship operate here as well? Hayek once said that we need free market utopia. We have to think things through even if there is no real chance of putting some market solutions into practice anytime soon. We have to understand how would private alternatives work. We have to make sure we know what the alternative is, even if it is, it, if it is politically almost impossible to see that it will ever happen. 
classical liberal thinkers provide us with great insights about why most activities should be organized along the principle of voluntary exchange, but left some activities for the state, its bureaucracy and its coercive apparatus. What about still increases the size and scope of market activities? And by the way, by the way, F. A. Hayek is a nice example. Right after the Second World War, when he was writing about money, he said, "Well, this is indeed something what the state should do. State should create a stable framework so that markets can operate within it." And money was part of the state-provided framework. Later on, he studied the history of money, history of inflation, and came to a conclusion, to us not really surprising, that history is a long sequence of inflations orchestrated by governments to benefit governments. And then Hayek changed his mind and said, well, money are too, too important to be left uh, to the state and wrote a wonderful book, Denationalization of Money, in which he said, well, what about private production of money? We don't need state to, to give us money. After all, money emerged on the market and not as a kind of decree of a state. And by the way, the same for the great Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman once, back in the 50s, he said, well, we have to eliminate the gold standard because what sense does it make to dig gold on one place, then transfer the gold uh, you know, thousands of miles to another place, and then we bury the gold there to be used as an anchor to our monetary system? Wouldn't it be better to just say, well, now gold will not be the anchor, we don't need gold standards. And those miners and all people involved in digging gold out of the ground and transporting it, they could do something else. Useful stuff, not this gold which nobody really needs. Well then, he saw that actually there is something to having the golden anchor to monetary system. And later on he said, well, I was mistaken. Uh, I expected that the price of gold would go down because monetary use of gold will not be in existence anymore. But the reality was that cutting off the golden link to money actually dramatically increased insecurity of the monetary systems. And people then went to buy gold to make sure they do not end up by having worthless pieces of paper, inflationary paper money in hand. So the point here is that the great thinkers in the liberal, liberal, classical liberal libertarian movement, they actually over time very often realized that there is much more what markets can do. And indeed we have wonderful books and work uh, on private production of security services and law. Great professors like Bruce Benson and indeed Rothbard and David Friedman and the whole new generation of people who studied at GMU under Pete Betke, such as Ed Stringham and Pete Leeson and Chris Coyne and others. So there is a lot of literature which is actually critical to the, to the masters, classical liberal sort of heroes, and they push the argument for markets to new spheres. And it's important for you to know what the argument is. There is another interesting aspect when talking about liberty um, here. We have to remember that when debating liberty, we actually often uh, rediscover ideas closely tied to this region. We had our great Havlicek, who played a similar role as Frédéric Bastiat in France. We had great Austrian, Karl Menger, founder of the Austrian school who studied here in Prague. Friedrich Wieser, the second generation of the Austrian school, Wieser taught here for years. Ben Bavark was born in Brno. The great Schumpeter was born in Trzesht in Moravia. Uh, and it is no surprise to Czech students that Hayek's name, Hayek, 
uh, sounds pretty Czech as well. And indeed, uh, his family ties are indeed Czech. Uh, and of course, we had our own important scholars. We can call it Czech branch of the Austrian economics, like Franz Chuhel, who Mises refers to in his Human Action and other work as somebody who discovered the utility theory, the ordinal utility theory. We had Karel English, who was partly critical to Austrians, but built on Austrians as well, and he was a super important intellectual uh, in the pre-war uh, period. So by studying uh, liberty, we may actually learn a lot about our own history. Um, when I see you, audience of young free marketeers, uh, and when I see technology available today, and when I see how easy you can learn about liberty, I'll feel very enthusiastically. Back in the 90s, many books on free market or Austrian economics had to be published only by free market think tanks. Today, you can find free market books on the shelves of bookstores thanks to a regular mainstream publishers. Recently, for example, um, such books by such authors as Peter Schiff or Tom Woods or Jesus Huerta de Soro, but also, for example, Matt Ridley and his Rational Optimist. And indeed, more people can read, read those books in English. Not our prime minister, not, not Dean Shevchik, but intelligent people can. Availability of literature on liberty is key, but of course, it does not get us automatically to a freer society. It is obvious that we face a very strong uh, enemy. The state has its powerful tools uh, and means to buy people up, to offer sweet deals, to control and regulate everything from school to science and the media. And indeed, now we all in Europe uh, willingly or not, are a part of this process of European political centralization, which is potentially uh, very dangerous. Um, by the way, to realize how much propaganda is connected to the whole thing, just uh, go uh, to YouTube channel and find the governmental information propaganda spots before Czech accession to the European Union, before the referendum. And you see that you know, when you see it today, you hardly can imagine how people could ever believe what was told to them. Indeed, paid by taxpayers' money, trying to brainwash taxpayers into believing this strange, uh, non-existent ideal of uh, Europe as, a, as one family nicely sort of watched and supervised from Brussels. Socialists and interventionists, however, have a serious problem, an unsolvable problem of building unworkable schemes of taxation and regulation which are doomed to fall apart. When things do not go in accordance with the plan, people start questioning it. Social climate changes and more and more people start understanding what originally only the visionaries could see. It becomes obvious that wasteful systems of regulations and taxation were designed by the state and for the benefit of the state and groups connected to the expropriation and redistributive machinery of the state. All that at the expense of common people. And here the room opens for free marketeers to push society towards more freedom. We have a very important argument to be made. We can make an argument defending common people against powerful systems of political government, a system run by the powerful pressure groups of privileged entities. 
I greatly appreciate that you, students for liberty, want not only to learn and debate, but also promote entrepreneurial solutions and be active in many other areas. I remember how excited I was in the early 90s when it looked as, as if we were about to abandon socialism and free most of economic and social life. After more than two decades, it seems that these hopes were not fully satisfied, perhaps with both local and global activities of Students for Liberty, we are getting a second chance. I hope you at least, you are at least so enthusiastic today and want to change the world as I was 20 years ago. I keep my fingers crossed for you and I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, after all, we have some assets, some new infrastructure available to help us. You can study with us at several institutes uh, in Czech, but if you wait one year or maybe two, we'll be opening a new international master program, PPE, uh, Philosophy, Politics and Economics, with extremely interesting people and schools participating such as Mike Munger and Duke University, such as Pete Betke and GMU, such as former dean at the law school in University of Ghent, Bodevin Bukhart, and many others. So I hope to see you coming back to several institutes. Long live liberty. Thank you. <laughs>